Um, next up, we have Doug Midori presenting Using NetFlow to Fight DDoS at the Source. Doug is the Director of Internet Analysis for Kentic, where he works on Internet Infrastructure Analysis. Prior to Kentic, he was the lead analyst for Oracle's Internet Intelligence Team, which was formerly Dyn Research and Renesis. This is Doug's eighth time presenting in Anog, and he first spoke in 2010 during a lightning talk session about accidentally importing censorship, which I thought that was my job. All right, take it away, Doug. Hey, thanks. Uh, before we get started, uh, show of hands, how many people are sending spoof traffic from their network right now? Anybody? Not too many hands. Uh, so hopefully you know who you are. And if you don't, well, this is a great talk for you. Um, so the this is a short uh, talk about NetFlow and DDoS. Um, this came from a conversation a few nanos ago between myself and Aaron Weintraub uh, who, of Cogent, who uses uh, NetFlow to, um, as we'll see, to identify spoof traffic used for DDoS attacks. So I thought this methodology would be worth presenting at a forum like this, because I think a lot of other people could be doing things along these lines. So just to set the stage, I think everyone's familiar with these, uh, uh, these facts here. We have DDoS attacks, or a variety of um, different methodologies are in use. In this case, we're looking at like the, the reflection attack kind of uh, uh, scenario, where you've got spoof traffic sent to lots of um, uh, internet-connected devices that are going to respond and then send their, um, uh, their, their responses onto the, the target, which was a spoofed uh, source address of that initial set of, of traffic. So how do we reduce this problem? Because we still have uh, a lot of DDoS attacks happening on a regular basis. Uh, there's a lot of work going into trying to reduce this problem. But the, um, so there's a couple different ways to get at it. Uh, this, is our, this is the diagram from you know, attacker to victim here. You can go after the, the devices, the internet connected um, devices. I guess we've got toothbrushes DDoSing people, maybe or not, I don't know, but um, uh, so, there are projects uh, like the Open Resolver project to try to identify these things uh, and try to limit how much uh, they can be harnessed for DDoS attacks. But the tr the truth is, we'll probably never you know secure all the devices of the internet in order to you know prevent them from being used for attacks. So we've got to kind of do that in addition to uh, things like step two. So trying to move upstream of this process uh, into the spoof traffic area. Uh, and we can try to address that with through technical means. So if people are familiar with BHP 38. Uh, people are also probably pr familiar with the fact that it's not deployed everywhere. And there's a few categories of non-deployment of BCB38. Uh, this is, again, to try to eliminate the possibility of uh, um, spoof traffic. So there's, you know, just lack of awareness and education is probably a, maybe the biggest category. Uh, there's also maybe some people just don't care. Uh, they know about it, just don't think it's worth their time. There's also a category of, of providers. If you're a transit provider, you may uh, not feel like you can deploy this because it may put at risk legitimate traffic, uh, legitimate customer traffic due to asymmetric routing. And maybe some people may want to deb debate that point, but the reality is that's, that's, that accounts for some of the lack of deployment. Um, and then there's this last category that we're going to delve into in this, in this talk here of like trying to go into, uh, figure out who are these networks that are uh, announcing this spoof traffic and try to get them to stop. So going back to that conversation with Aaron a couple of uh, nanogs ago, you know, we were talking about how uh, he was using uh, NetFlow Analytics to try to identify um, uh, the spoof traffic. And I'm gonna go through like his methodology here, but it boils down to two steps here. The first step is to try to identify uh, you know, from customer interfaces where there are a lot of packets going to a lot of uh, destination IP addresses using commonly abused UDP ports. Okay, that alone doesn't uh, doesn't amount to spoof traffic, but you use that to then dig further into those cases and figure out, all right, what is the purported sources of the traffic and does that make sense given the customer? Uh, if you use these two, we'll see, you, you come up with some pretty solid cases here. So just to build out step one a little more, 
Again, building a query that can pull external traffic, uh, 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 NetFlow based on you know, external ne customer networks. Again, to looking at just commonly abused UDP ports. So we've got a list along the bottom. This is what Aaron uses. It doesn't have to be exhaustive. Obviously, there's a lot of you know, different versions of DDoS attacks out there. Uh, the, what you were looking for are, are indicators. Uh, they may be also doing other types of uh, spoof traffic for other types of attacks. But if they're doing those, they're probably hitting these too. So they, they serve as useful, um, a useful set of uh, ports to, to uh, pull out in, in NetFlow to find candidates to dig into. Um, for the metrics of just like you know in a in a report, how do you how does um, how do you rank uh, the the results? We want to uh, rank by uh, the packets per second. You know, we typically we're looking at bits per second when we look at NetFlow. In this case, because of the nature of what we're doing here, this is going to be a lot of it's not going to be bits per second. It's going to be packets per second that um, make this. Uh, um, Interesting, and then uh, you know a large number of destination IPs. Those destination IPs are really the uh, the reflection devices that are going to be launching those attacks onto the target, and they want to group those results by customer interface to enable step two. So if we were to run this uh, step one, we end up with a handful of customer uh, you know, customer interfaces. We've changed the names of the uh, of the innocent, or in some cases not so innocent uh, uh, networks. And um, so we have like customer B here with this big spike uh, of, uh, it's hard to read in this uh, graphic here, but the spike is based on lots of packets per second to a large set of uh, um, uh, destination IPs for commonly abused UDP ports. Okay, that's worth, that's worth digging into further because it's probably, uh, it, this is, it could be, it could be um, some spoof traffic used for DDoS. Okay, so now that you've gotten that candidate, then we go back into the system and look at, again, just looking at packets to uh, commonly be used UDP ports uh, based on that customer interface that, you, uh, that we identified in, the, in step one. I want to group the source IPs, uh, group by source IP, AS. This would actually be destination port, um, not source port. Uh, source port would be a, an ephemeral port. Um, but we're, again, setting the metrics to packets per second, unique destination IPs, and we're uh, going to look at what that uh, gets us. And it's probably hard to read the results here, but in that red box, we're looking at what were the purported sources of this traffic that, were coming, that was coming through this interface based on the NetFlow. And we're going to see in there is like Verizon, uh, Microsoft, uh, Beeline, Kazakhstan. Um, there's a few other uh, 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 networks that are supposedly originating this traffic, and it's an impossible mix. And what this is are, are not the actual sources, as it would be, uh, as the NetFlow would tell us. It's actually these are the these are actually the targets of those attacks uh, that we're seeing in the NetFlow. And so this is this is what makes it a conclusive case technically that you've got uh, DDoS uh, spoof traffic getting used for DDoS attacks coming through one of your customer interfaces based on NetFlow. And now the fun begins because um, now you've got this. Uh, you can do one of the things with this insight. Um, you could just refer this to the abuse team, put them on a track to disconnect, and maybe you end up doing that anyway if they're not uh, if they're not really uh, working very hard to address the the, the issue. But ultimately, you know, for the benefit of everyone and the internet. It would be ideal to get these guys to understand what they're doing and what, and see if they can get them to stop. Uh, so uh, it, the worry is if you dis disconnect, they could just probably go on to another uh, transfer provider and continue doing what they're doing, you know, uh, terrorizing the internet. Um, and so you have to reach out, and this is a manual process uh, to try to uh, engage with these folks. And if your you know customer base goes over multiple countries. Uh, you may face uh, language barriers. Uh, there's a lot of challenges that get faced. You have a lot of, uh, there's network engineers, believe it or not, who are overworked and poorly trained. That's all of us, right? Um, uh, unfortunately, you've got networking teams that don't, um, are not interested in fixing the problem uh, sometimes, and there's not much you can do in that case. In fact, there's so many excuses. Uh, a certain cat at a cloud provider made this uh, bingo card. Uh, it's again a little hard to read, but there's everything under the sun that people have heard. Uh, you know, in the 
the top left we've got that, those aren't our ips and you're like yes they're not your ips that's the problem uh that's the uh, that's what we're trying to tell you or uh the solution is we'll we'll just go and we'll just block those uh, ports we'll block those udp ports and we're like well that's not gonna there's no way you're gonna be able to do that for a, a long-term solution so there's everything under the sun uh it is a uh, there's no um uh there's no way around having to deal with uh um uh, some uh, a bunch of excuses in this uh, anti-spoofing response bingo card, but I'll leave you with this: um, that you know, there's there's a call to action to this community. Uh, if you are a if you operate a network that isn't doing isn't um, is allowing spoof traffic, even though we didn't get a lot of hands at the beginning, there's there's some people out there that are doing this. Um, there's a good chance that someone's using your infrastructure to DDoS other people on the internet, and as a result. Uh, if you are a service provider, you've got a, a responsibility to the internet, and as Aaron would put it, uh, a moral obligation uh, to spend some time looking for this spoof traffic and engaging with customers or figuring out where they, um, where it's coming from and get them to stop. Uh, and on the flip side of that, if you are a company who gets contacted by one of your upstreams uh, that, hey, we think we're, we're seeing spoof traffic coming out of your network, you're going to need some tools and some process in order to investigate and validate uh, that request and deal with it. Uh, and you don't want to be uh, the person that completes uh, someone else's anti-spoofing response bingo card. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, oh, hi, hey. Tony Tauber from Comcast. Maybe you could put the contents of the bingo card, like line items, <laughs> tell your knock never to send these. <laughs> All, you know, it's helpful. Be oh, okay, yeah, T tack this up on the wall, uh, right? Yeah, or some, some place, yeah. You have to come up, with, come up with someone that aren't on the card. We need new excuses. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Uh, Klaus from Telco Manager. Um, my question is about the when you say that the, the peer is not is allowing the spoofing is because they know the the routes being advertised in there and they should filter IPs that it's not being advertised there. What yeah, do you mean about yeah, that? like the BCP thirty uh, eight okay. model. Okay, got so it. That's... So the, they are not implementing that. That yeah, that, and there's lots of cases where that's not implemented. Is there? Have you seen any case that? NetFlow is not enough to identify um, this some sort of denial oh. service attack. Um, I guess I don't know what the weaknesses of this uh, approach. I think it, if it's coming through your network, it's in your NetFlow. So now it's just a matter of are you able to pull that insight out? Um, I don't know. I can't think of a way that why that why that wouldn't catch it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you.